Hey, 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 welcome, welcome, welcome. How we doing today? It's 4 p.m. on the dot, and we're about to cook. My name is Jeffrey Crittenden, also known as Jeff the Chef, also known as Bahamas Bay, or Mr. Fountain if you know me. So today, we have that same series, Anyone Can Cook, second episode. And today we're gonna to be working with antioxidants. Very important right now. So antioxidants are nutrients, minerals, enzymes, and they help prevent cancer, heart diseases, and they've been known to help Alzheimer's. So antioxidants can be found in colorful vegetables. Vegetables that have color, as you can see here, we have some purple potatoes. We have a, what this is called is an ancient pepper. I haven't used it before, so we're about to try it today. Uh, also, we have basil. We have a little bit of moringa spice. So we're about to have fun today. We're gonna have a lot of fun. So, first thing I'm gonna start off with is my moringa chimichurri. Moringa chimichurri. So chimichurri is an Argentine-based salsa, and what it does is it enhances every type of flavor. It has bitter, it has sweet, it has salty, and it's almost like a vinaigrette, except it's a little thicker. So I have moringa in it because moringa is an antioxidant. It's one of those power foods that we always hear about. And moringa grows in the subtropical regions. It is a, a tree, it's a plant, first then a tree, and then it can also be found dry. And so what I have is the dry version right here. So let's make this moringa chimichurri. Old school blender. Put on some gloves, we have to stay sanitary. So did anybody check on my first video? Anybody debone any chickens yet? <laughs> I know that one was a little bit difficult. I was probably a level three out of five on the difficulty scale, but hey, I'm showing you what you need to learn to cook like me. The essence of this whole series is that anyone can cook, anyone. Follow my steps and we have vibrant ingredients and we're gonna make it happen. So we have some basil and we have a little bit of parsley. I'm going to add this in here. We have a little bit of garlic. A little red wine vinegar. A little bit of honey. As we all know, honey is very, very good for you. It's a natural sugar. A little bit of salt. A little bit of mustard. You can use Dijon. This is regular yellow mustard. Mustard is there to bind everything together. And we have a little goat pepper. So if you missed the last show, goat pepper, also known as um, habanero, scotch bonnet, it's a, it's a play on things. It's, they all in the same family. So we have goat pepper. And the way I like to keep goat pepper, if you ever get it fresh, you want to store it like this. This is vinegar and goat pepper. And you can use this on any type of marinade. It's a lot of heat. And what it does is it breaks down the proteins. Okay? So we have some water and a little bit of oil. The water is just to basically thin it out a little bit. We don't want it too thick. And then I'm going to use some olive oil, not regular oil, olive oil. A good amount here. And let's, get, let's let it go. Let's come 
coming together well. The last thing I want to add is the moringa. Don't forget about this. Mix this up a little bit. And while that's going, I have some water boiling. I got some vegetables right here. Tastes good is the question. I think I need a little bit more heat. So we can put a little bit more goat pepper in here. Now listen, goat pepper is good for vitamin C, vitamin A, vitamin K. I don't know if it's a vitamin J, but if it was, it'd be me, right? That's a joke, vitamin J. So, this going. Done. So what I like to do is cool down my sauces because this blend is once it's keep going, it's hot. Yeah. So what we do is we pour this in a bowl. And we're gonna cool this down. So sauce is done. Nice and green. We have a question from Nicolette Archer. Talk to me. What if you have fresh moringa leaves? Hey, fresher the better. And also, you know, the basis of this uh, of this sauce, I was home back in the Bahamas. I was home and we had this family gathering. And I was like, I need to make a nice sauce. So what did we do? We made a chimichurri. I had Spanish thyme, which is almost like mint, but it was excellent. Same way we did this, it's the same way we did the uh, chimichurri with the spicy tart with the Spanish thyme. So what I like to do is put this in here. Let this cool down. All right. On to the next one. And where is that that you put it in? In an ice bath. So what I'm doing is shocking it. So it's already green. So what I'm doing is cooling it down. If I don't cool it down, it'll get brown. Okay. So. And for the lay people out there, what is an ice bath? An ice bath is just a container with some ice water in it, just like this. So I know everybody can cook, but I want to show you the proper techniques. So one technique is blanching. Blanching is basically cooking something and then cooling off quickly. As you can see here, I already have some green beans. They've been blanched. So I'll just blend some uh, Brussels sprouts just to show you the technique. So you want to clean these off, wash them. And while your water is boiling, you want to add salt at the end. Why you add salt at the end? Because if you add salt too early, then your, your pan starts to oxidize and it gets that film around it. And that's kind of hard to clean once it gets too much of it. So this is simple blanching, okay? All I'm doing is put it in there. I'm gonna let that cook. And to bring it back to a high boil, all you gotta do is cover it. Voila. So, I have, like I said, I have some vegetables here ready to go. I have some green beans. I have some wax yellow beans. I have some string beans. And I also have potatoes. What I did with the potatoes is I charred it. I'll show you how I did it. It's already clean. And this is very, very simple. So, the pit... Potatoes are purple because of the antioxidants in it. One of the antioxidants is called anthocyanins. Anthocyanins, say that five times, anthocyanins. So these are purple potatoes. They originally came from Peru, 
and then they were imported all over the world. These are high in antioxidants. So a little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper, and since I'm cooking Latino flavors, I'm gonna go with a little bit of Spanish oregano, or, or Latin American oregano, and a little bit of olive oil. So with this, quick mix, straight in the oven. Now about those Brussels sprouts, they should be perfectly done. So what I do is I take them out, and these are good to go. You can either eat them like this, or you can saute them. But I just want you to know, this is the proper way of blanching. And if you want to cool it down, just take this out and put it in the ice bath, okay? An extra one, not the same one. So today we're gonna to cook some steak. Who's ready for some steak? I normally don't cook steak. Why? Because I'm a big seafood lover. Where, where do you get the, uh, where can you get purple potatoes? You can get purple, I have, I got mine from Whole Foods. You can get from Trader Joe's or most, most high-end uh, supermarkets, they sell it. Or if you have a vendor, talk to your vendor. Or if you want to talk to me, I can get you some. Who's asking about purple potatoes? Constantine Crittenden. Constantine Crittenden. Whole Foods has them. Auntie Connie. Auntie Connie. All right. So let's season up our steak. As you can see, I'm moving around things. I'm cooking. We're not playing in this kitchen today. We are cooking. So I want to marinate my steak for a little bit. Um, let's talk about steak. First of all, this is called a Kansas City steak. So what it is is the loin and it has the bone attached to it. The loin is the lower part of the back, right before the, the leg, which is also called the butt, of course. But this right here is one of the leanest pieces of meat, next to, of course, the filet mignon, which is the leanest meat of the cow, or most animals. So, I like it because, as you can see, it has a little bit of fat where the flavor is, but it also has nice marbling. No, this is not dry age. This is not Wagyu. This is straight Kansas City. Get it from your average store, but we're gonna make it simple. One of the biggest things about making meat or cooking meat is your preparation. I can grill this or I can set I can sear it. Pan sear it, roast it. So what we're gonna do is a simple way. I like to sear it so it's all caramelized so you can taste the flavor of the meat so first thing I want to do is a little salt now I go heavy with the salt because it's a big piece of meat you don't want to be too too incy wincy with the salt you would do incy wincy with some fish so let's go with some gold pepper playing around a little bit a little bit of gold pepper won't hurt. Normally I would use salt and black pepper, but gold pepper has a, a floral essence to it. And like I said, if you don't know what gold pepper is, get a little bit of habanero or scotch bonnet. So we have the gold pepper, gonna sprinkle a little bit of oregano on it. And as you can see, I'm doing both sides, yeah? And you can do this ahead of time. I just want you to see how light I am with the seasonings because what I want is the meat to speak for itself. What's that other thing you just put on there? That right there, that is some garlic. And the garlic that I had, I actually confit. Confit means to cook in fat. So I actually cooked the garlic in some olive oil. So as you can see, it's translucent. And I just diced it up very, very fine. Didi wants to know, did you wash your steak with lime or vinegar? No, I didn't. I did not. You can, but where I get my meat from, I know the people, I trust them. Uh, normally I do, if I'm getting it from, like I said, a supermarket, but this is coming from a vendor, a secret vendor, 
which I'm tag teaming up with later. I'm partnering up with them. So we'll talk about that in another episode. So as you can see here, we have the Kansas City steak. Yeah, ready to go. You have a hot pan. You want your pan nice and hot like this over here. Nice and hot, ready to go. So what I'm gonna do is add a little bit of oil. Why do you need it so hot? So it can get a nice sear. You want that dark caramelization. We're not boiling meat here. We're, 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 we're searing it. So it's smoking. So I press down on it gently so all sides of it gets that nice crust. So we want this to cook medium, medium well for about two minutes on each side. And normally I'll toss it in the oven, but we have magic here. So we're gonna do something extremely quick. Man, I wish you were here to smell this. Add a little bit more oil. Yeah. Oh, uh, oh. Uh. Bang a line. So, like I said, we have these roast potatoes. We throw them in the oven. So when they come out, I actually, they look like this right here. And I actually have some Brussels sprouts that I did the same with. Toss them in some salt, pepper, a little bit of oil, and this is what you come out with. So when I cook, I like color. I like my food to look like junkanoo. If you don't know what junkanoo is, you gotta go to the Bahamas. So we got colors here. We got green, purple. I'm gonna put a little bit of red in here. And then when I also plate up, I like to visualize, I love to visualize what the plate is gonna look like because it has to be eye appealing. Yeah, people eat with their eyes. Wendy wanted to know if it's olive oil as well for frying. Do you use? I don't use olive oil for frying because of the smoking heat. Uh, every oil has a different, what they call, smoke point. And olive oil has a low smoke, smoke point. So that means it will burn quickly, and you don't want it to burn quickly. So, turn this one. All right, let's see what this beef looking like. I'll say two more seconds. I like my meat dark. Dark meat. All day. So we have these potatoes. Let's cut these potatoes up while we wait on the meat. We cut them on the bias. This is nice. This is healthy. This is the way you should eat. So we have some of that. I, I'm still learning about food, so this pepper, I've never seen this before. It looks like a poblano. It's called an ancient pepper. It's a Latino pepper, so I hope I don't burn my mouth up today, but we can find out. My girls say, my girls say that I can't take heat. I'm gonna prove them wrong today. So we got a little bit of pepper. All right, now that meat, I can hear it. Can you hear it? I can hear it. It's ready to turn. That's how your meat should look. This is how your meat should always look when you cook it. Crust, a little crust, brown, dark, but every, all the juice is in there. Connie wants to know, do purple potatoes taste similar to red or white or sweet potatoes? Purple potatoes are similar to sweet potatoes, but they're not quite as sweet. They have a nice creaminess to it in the inside. So 
Also, because today is Father's Day, well, the Father's Day edition, it's Father's Day for me because I'm eating that steak by myself. <laughs> My girl's looking at me like I'm crazy. Yeah, I'm eating it by myself. Y'all could eat some chicken. <laughs> but anyway, when you're eating red meat, you should eat four to five ounces daily. And that's what's recommended. They said John Wayne back in the day, John Wayne was the actor, the cowboy, he ate a whole, a whole steak a day. And he lasted kind of long, right? Go figure. But if we are trying to be nutritious, nutritiously sound and we're trying to live healthy, we have to remember that you should eat two cups of fruit a day, at least three cups of veggies, um, three cups of dairy, and that could be dairy or dairy product, um, six ounces of grain, which should be which should be whole grain. I'm gonna turn this meat off because it's smelling good. I'm getting hungry. Three three cups of dairy, six ounces of grain, and um, five ounces of protein. Um, last last but not least, you want to eat at least six or digest consume six teaspoons of oil, essential oils. Uh, so let's go and let's, let's do these veg right quick. There's a lady named Regina Crittenden. She wants uh, to know uh, how many minutes before turning the steak. It depends. So this is about an inch thickness. I say three minutes. Three minutes. So I got my potatoes in there. It's nice and hot. I'm going to add my potatoes. Like I said, we cook it today. It's quick and simple. Look at the color on this. Beautiful. Add a little bit of garlic. And of course, my green beans. I wish you could smell this. Deglaze, a little bit of water. A little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper. And if you want to, go ahead, throw a little bit of oregano in there. Like I said, I like to cook with colors. If you follow me on Instagram, Chef Jeffrey Crittenden, you will notice I like to cook with a lot of colors. That's where the nutrients are. That's where the antioxidants are. Yeah? So, since everything is cooked, this is almost ready to plate. We're gonna cover this for a few seconds. Well, Cassie wants to know, who taught you how to cook? Who's that? Cassandra. Cassie, what's up, cuz? Uh, I learned from my grandparents, my grandfather and my grandmother in the Bahamas. Uh, my grandmother, she was, an, I don't even know what to say, she was like a master chef to me. She would cook savory, sweet, um, which is salty food and desserts. And um, my grandfather, he was the best, what the French would call a poissonier. He was good at seafood and uh, one of our soups in the Bahamas we call sauce any type of sauce he would make. Actually, every Thursday, we had a fish fry. Every Thursday, he would get the fish fresh from the dock, fresh from the harbor, clean it himself, uh, season it, and that was the best fish I've ever had. One of my um, main, main uh, passions, or my main themes about cooking is nostalgia. So when I cook food, I think about my grandparents. So on to the latest, the latest part of my meal. We have what you call here some base scallops. These are not your average scallops. These are base scallops. They are nice and tasty. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna season these up. So we're gonna season those up with a little bit of uh, salt, some salt, pepper. We get a dry bowl. We got some salt, 
and we have to make sure it's dry because we don't want it to be wet. That's the last thing we want with our scallops. They need a nice sear. So we have a little bit of salt. Hey, how about some more gold pepper? Y'all gonna know about gold pepper when y'all finish watching me. And I need some lime. I'll have my gaffer go and get some lime. So we're gonna call this, we're gonna switch it up. Hey, that's what we do. One thing I remember, my favorite moment on my Ratatouille, one of my favorite movies, my Ratatouille show was that um, as the cook was walking, as the waiter was walking out the door with a dish, the chef, he sprinkled something on it at the last minute. He sauced it with a different sauce at the last minute. And that was chef do. That separates the chef from a cook. Chefs, they know how to freestyle. They know how to accentuate things. And they make it so natural. So what I'm gonna do is accentuate this with a little bit of turmeric. Turmeric is also healthy for you. Um, right now, all this, you know, antioxidants, superfoods, is now becoming a fad, but you know, growing up in the Bahamas, this was regular. So, turmeric, which is a spice, Indian spice, and it is um, a sub-spice to curry. It's one of the eight spices that make up curry. Um, it's great for you. So, I have a little bit of lime. I'm going to add to that just a little bit because I don't want the pan too wet. Okay, a little sprinkle. I got the salt. I got the gold pepper. Let's cook. Mix this up. So we're going to call this golden base scallops. Sounds good to me. Nice hot pan. Same thing with the seafood. You want this pan hot. Yeah. So this steak, once it's done, you want to rest it. So when you rest it, you want to put it on a wire rack. For me right now, if I touch it, another glove because I'm being sanitary. If you touch it, you will see that if it bumps back, that means it's me. Now it feels like a little medium, but it's perfect for me. All right, so what you want to do is you want to put this on the side and you want to let this rest. You let this rest time. If I let it cook, I want to rest for five minutes because you want all the juices inside to stay inside once you cut it. So since I have one already ready, already ready, is that a, is that a phrase? Already ready. This feels like about medium rare, medium. So I think I'll eat that like I said, eat it by myself. You have a little bit of hot oil. So we cook these and we don't touch them. Let them cook by themselves. We want them to get a nice char on it. Yeah. And while that's going, we're gonna plate up. Do you hear the smell? Let's plate, because this will be done in exactly 30 seconds, 45 seconds. We have our plate, yeah? Sauce. When I plate, I want it to look like something that nobody else has made. I like to, I want, I want to, because it's an art. Eye candy? Eye candy. There you go. You, you're my eye candy. <laughs> so. Con Connie says she loves turmeric. It's an anti inflammatory. It is. Exactly. So, what you want to do with this? Put this on the side, or you can have everything get a little taste of this. So, I want everything to get a little taste of this. I'm just going to make 
one nice line. A little bit over here. Because I'm a dipper. I like to dip. So we have our vegetables. As you can see, a lot of flavor, a lot of color. I wish you were here. So, take these up a little bit. We got a little caramelization on it. Nice and We're going to turn those off because they are done. So we have our potatoes. One more potato. We have our potatoes. We have our ancient pepper. We have our green beans. We have our chimichurri sauce. We have our steak. Always a sharp knife. Your Auntie Sonia in Oakland is watching. Hey, Auntie. What it do? <laughs> Wellington Lightborn says, Jeff, my boy, great show. Thank when you, When you coming out with your cookbook. <laughs> hey, man. Godspeed. <laughs> so what I like to do is cut off the bone first. And then, as you can see, the grain is going that way. So you want to cut against the grain, yeah? So, now since we only eating four ounces of meat, uh, let's give them one more. Let's give them four and a half ounces. But it look like five. Most of the men that I talk to about steak, they prefer their steak medium or medium well. Right now, this is between medium and medium well. It's not bad, but I like medium rare. So I can go a little bit more pink. So once we finish with this, we got these tasty scallops. Base scallops. Whoa. They're flying everywhere. So as you can see, this is your Surf and Turf. This is the Father's Day edition. Get a little wipe up. If you're Italian, hey, you could be Spanish too. Put a little parsley on top. And here we go. So, thank you for joining me for the Father's Day edition. I hope you like it. Kansas City Steak. Remember, eat healthy. Eat in moderation and eat a variety. Stay tuned for the next episode next week. If you have any questions, find me on Instagram, Chef Jeffrey Crittenden. Find me on Facebook, Jeffrey Crittenden. Or you can visit my website, www.jeffchef.com. Or YouTube, where I will be loading and editing these videos. Jeffrey Crittenden, Jeff Chef, on YouTube. Thank you. My old schoolie Crystal said, Lord have mercy, that looks so good. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Surf and turf, y'all. My way. <laughs> <laughs>